Hey, ladies. Hello, hello, hello. All right. Happy Monday. Let's get it. Let's have a great week, right? Let's make sure our minds are right because what we think about all day, all the time, repeating in our mind is the direction our life is going. So pay close attention. Uh, please say hello as you're coming on. I'm going to take a moment to pin this to the top of our Facebook group. Make sure you're in it. It is called Macro Tracking and Weightlifting for Women. We talk a lot about uh, research-backed concepts and just uh, quality body, body recomposition and things like that. Okay, beautiful. All right, so we had a post from a gal. I'm actually going to pull it up. I did block her name just in case... Um, for whatever reason, she didn't want someone to see. So this is what I'll uh, talk about today. So she said, I'm currently lifting five consecutive days and then taking two rest days. I walk 10K steps and I'm sticking to my macros. I had my macros rechecked twice already because I was not gaining any weight. I'm eating 400 extra calories and exercise remains the same and I'm using progressive overload. Still sedentary, no health concerns. My question is, what's happening basically, right? Is five days too much? Am I exercising too much and breaking even on calories? I'm seeing less flab and more definition, but measurements and scale haven't changed. So she's basically wondering what's happening, okay? So I'm gonna talk through lots of uh, answers here. And if you see me looking down, I'm just referring to my notes. Okay, so I'm actually gonna pull this back up on the screen, but I'm gonna um, make my face larger. Okay, hopefully you guys can see that. Um, so a couple things that I just want to point out directly. Okay. So measurements are dropping and she's tightening up, but the scale remains the same. You're not in a surplus love. You're in maintenance. That is the beautiful thing that happens in maintenance is you become a more fit version of yourself and the scale stays the same. So indicator that you need more calories, number one, or indicator number one right there that you need more calories. Indicator number two, that you need more calories in a surplus, right? Your goal is to gain muscle and gain weight, right? That's what I hear you saying. Uh, so indicator number two, that you need more calories is you're super hungry. <laughs> um, you are not hungry in a surplus. Definitely not. However, this one can get tricky because you guys, sometimes if you're hungry, it may mean that your quality of food needs to change, right? Like, for example, a hundred calories of butternut squash is like a ton of food, right? Maybe not a ton, but versus a hundred calories of a Reese's peanut butter cup is a teeny amount. Same calories, you're going to be starving with one of them and probably satiated with another. So be careful with hunger cues. They can really uh, trip you up because food quality is vital. Food balancing and spacing throughout your day is vital, right? Um, however, I think with you, it's definitely saying your body can handle more food. It definitely needs more food. So the 400 calorie thing, it's like you may think that it's over that much, but in reality, your body is already showing, hey, you're actually in maintenance and hey, you need more calories. So I would bring yourself up by like 150 calories and um, see how your body responds there. Having your macros checked by someone, to be honest, is totally pointless, right? Because we need to see data over time. Like, how is your body actually responding? What is your compliance? How is your food quality? What are you eating throughout the day? How are you eating throughout the day? What are habits around food that you have? Or do you have balance? Or, or I mean, uh, do you have flexibility? Or are you being restricted, right? Those things really matter when it comes to understanding how your body is responding to macros. Um, so someone without any of that information, just randomly looking at your macros will never be able to tell you an accurate um analysis of whether those macros are what you need for your goals. Okay. You, you have to see trends. You have to see weekly data over time for sure. Okay. Uh, the next thing that I wanted to talk through, let's see, let me check my notes to see what else I wanted to chat through. Oh yeah. I wanted to say, um, yeah, like you're petite and you have amazing amount of calories. That is wonderful. Um, just for a frame of reference, totally understand that everyone's different, but I think it's possible that women see low calories so often. So I want to throw out some numbers of myself and our trainers and uh, current clients who are in um, maintenance and a surplus. So in maintenance, it's really, really normal. Not for everybody. Some women maintenance is around 2000. Other women's maintenance is like 
2,300 to 2,500 calories maintenance, okay? Um, my maintenance is about 2,400 calories. Um, and I don't, I only lift like three days a week probably just because I've just been maintaining for years. Like I just, I don't, I don't need anything else. You know what I'm saying? Women who are uh, training five days a week, their maintenance is even higher, 2550, right? In a surplus, it may look like 2800. You know what I'm saying? So don't fear higher macros. Your body is showing and your results, love, are showing uh, that you definitely need more to gain weight and to um, gain muscle. Well, not to gain muscle, but definitely to gain weight. But you'll gain more muscle, right? Okay. I think y'all know what I was trying to say. All right, cool. The other thing I wanted to share, don't stop lifting. <laughs> Definitely don't bring down your lifts, right? Increase your food. Babe, if, you're, if your goal is to gain muscle, gain weight, don't take away from your lifts. That's taken away from the right path, right? Add more food so you can gain more muscle and you're supporting uh, your weight gain as well, okay? Um, yeah, five days is amazing. But now here's the caveat to that. Make sure you fully understand where the volume is going each week. You say you're doing progressive overload, which can mean a lot of things, but I imagine it means you're getting stronger, right? You're doing something to increase your weight or increase your ability, right, in the gym. That's awesome. That's, that says that you're working hard. But here's the thing. Make sure you understand how much volume is, like, let's say in terms of sets, how much volume is going to your glutes? How much volume is going to your uh, hamstring? How much volume is going to your lateral delt, your interior delt, your posterior delt? What about a wide back? What about uh, the muscles in your mid back, right? There's, there, there's so many parts to it. And so if you don't know how much volume or how many sets per muscle group you have that week, the problem is your physique will never get to the point you're wanting it to get to because your plan isn't set for it, right? I was doing a consultation call, I think it was uh, Friday, and she said we were going through her lift, right? And she was sharing me her lift, and I was giving feedback and sharing the things that she needed to change. And she said, okay, awesome. I created a new lift, and it's way more leg-focused. What do you think? And I said, 100%, you're going to plateau that's not at all going to achieve what you needed to achieve. Right. And so, and it was because the volume, there was not nearly enough. The optimal volume per week to grow muscle is 10 to 24 sets, right? Research has, has done, or uh, researchers, excuse me, have done studies to say, okay, where's the point of diminishing return? What if we go higher than 24? And exactly that happens, usually a point of diminishing return, right? Where you're not getting enough recovery to grow. And so it's like more is not always better, right? 10 to 24 sets per muscle that you want to grow is proven to be really optimal. Here's another caveat to that though. We can't do that for every muscle all the time, right? We don't have enough time in the gym, definitely not. So at Queens of Iron, our clients, their workouts change every four weeks, right? We call that a phase, like phase one, right, is weeks one through four. Phase two is weeks five through eight, right, for example. And their workouts keep changing, so their body keeps changing. Phase one, or the first four-week phase, we may focus on, like, the anterior delt, bringing the waist in, right? Wide lats, bam, okay? The next phase... Maybe we're focusing on the glutes and the hamstrings, right? So you don't have to put that many sets on every lift, but make sure that the muscles that you want to grow are getting enough volume or such a waste of time. It's not fully a waste of time because it's great that you're exercising, but it's like they're work smarter, not harder. <laughs> it's like that age old thing, right? Uh, there's definitely a way to work smarter. So Increase macros, make sure your volume is uh, really put where your body needs it. And um, yeah, you should, you should do great. That's awesome. That's super exciting. Your metabolism is healthy. It's running efficiently, smashing it. Good job. All right, ladies. Cool. Let me know what questions you have or if any thoughts came up or um, anything at all. So cool. All right. Awesome. Well, I hope you have a great day. I hope that was really helpful. And uh, any other questions too that you want me to answer on live video, please let me know. I'd love to share uh, thoughts and insights and examples and just help you guys learn and grow and keep getting better results that you can maintain <laughs> and that you're really healthy and fit. <laughs> okay, ladies. Awesome. I'll see you later. Have a great day.